Okay folks, you may remember from uh, yesterday's video, chronographed the rifle with busy magnums and it was putting out about nine and a half foot pounds, uh, so it needed tuning up a bit. So uh, just to make sure we're on the same song sheet, I'm going to put uh, some day state uh, field target heavies through and these weigh uh, 10.25 grains. Sometimes it's the efficiency of the pellet that makes all the difference. So, if these are in the same ballpark, I'll, I'll start tuning, but if these bring it up to where it should be, I'll not be able to tune it. Uh, but uh, what I'll do, I'll open the, uh, the FX software up and uh, we'll put in the new details. UK, uh, produce stats. Ten point two five grain. One seven seven. Uh, it's not a Diablo. Uh, I'll put hunting down, I think. Uh, units feet per second. Pellet make. Day state. FT. Heavy. Okay. Think that should do it. Turn the crony on. Make sure my Bluetooth switched on. Probably not. Oh, it is. Effects. Establishing connection. 
Okay. That's it. Right. So we'll begin. the reading six five two six three six six five two six five two Six forty six four seven six four seven right next one six five two six four seven six three six Six five two six five two again actually uh, six three one last magazine six four five six three one Six forty six four nine six four seven six three six. That's it. Okay. So then average of six four four, uh, high of six. 652 and a low of 631. Uh, a spread of 21, standard deviation of 7.4, shot count 17. Uh, right. to foot pounds we'll see what it was so yeah looking at it you can see now that the uh, the results are uh, an average of 9.4 high of 9.7 low of 9.1 so what I'm going to do now based on that it's the same as the Bisley Magnums I'm going to strip the rifle down adjust the armor spring and then we'll put it over the chronograph again uh, but I'm, I'll be aiming to put it between 11 11 and a half foot pounds okay so uh, I'll get on with that okay then we'll get on with uh, disassembling the rifle scope off first and then uh, take the stock off uh, and the block needs to come off trigger block move the back end and on this particular one you adjust the hammer rather than the hammer spring Scope out of the way. Just 
stock stock bolt is uh, the five I believe on this one. There. there are two Allen bolts to uh, remove. I'll just bring in the zoom of the camera so you can see a bit better. That's a, uh, a four. Oh. Yeah, yeah, these are both four. So the best way to do this is start on doing the, the front one, not all the way, part of the way, and then the rear one. But notice. I'm actually cupping the back end here because this cap is under tension from the hammer spring. Okay, so that's come out. <clears throat> Another thing to notice when the trigger block comes off is that there's a spring and a ball bearing. I think the ball bearing's already rolled out. That's the block off. There's the spring. There's the ball bearing. Now the next thing to come off is, uh, I don't know if you can see it, but there's another little allen screw there. Uh, and you get to that through the top, I believe that's a number, probably a number two, maybe less. Uh, let's see. Two and a half mil. So you pull it through the hole in the top, and it's also got a washer underneath it when it comes out, the spacer washer. So that's come out. There's a little Allen nut and there's the washer. Okay. So all we need to do now Pull the armor back, grab a hold and pull it out. Now the way to make power adjustments on the armor is by screwing this either out or in. The further out it goes, the less power you've got. The further in it goes, the more power you've got because you've got more travel. Uh, that's what I tend to do. Use a the two and a half millimeter Allen wrench because it is locked. What the hell? I did tighten this one up. Basically, might have to put it in a vise, not locked it too tight, but yeah, I'll put it in a vise. Okay, so what basically what I do. Loosen the back bolt off. What I'm going to do now is screw it in. I'll screw it in a couple of turns. But now, that's what I'm doing now, screwing the back, locking the back bolt up again. Hands cramping up. 
probably gone in too far there. So it doesn't take much to increase the power on it, so. Okay. Just stop by, we say, one turn or just take it from there. And all we can do is do that, put it back in the rifle, uh, chronograph it, see if you need to decrease or increase. Okay, <clears throat> now when you put it back, you've got to make sure that the bolt is in the cock position, otherwise it will not fire, so it makes it even harder to get back together, but uh, that's the way it is. that way up. There's a little uh, like screw sticking up on the bolt probe that goes in the groove there and that's what pulls it back and the little uh, dish on there is what the ball bearing sits on and that's all that uh, just the sear on it basically. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to push that in let the bolt go forward, which you need to put this screw back in, remember. And the best way I've found to do that is to get your Allen uh, wrench, stick it through the hole, otherwise you're fiddling about all day trying to get it in place. Put the screw on, push it up with your finger and then locate it. Makes it a lot easier then to get back together. You can tell I've had it apart quite a bit over the time. So that's that back in place. So what you need to do now, pull the bolt back, lift it up, put the ball bearing back. And what I tend to do, I, I tend to put thing, uh, something under the bolt because it will drop down. So what I can use on this is the actual handle of the bolt. If you look on the back there on the trigger seal, you'll see a hole just there, and that's what the spring locates onto. Okay, all right, I'll say. <clears throat> so, at this point, I'll put it back on. The, that one is a front one, I believe. That is the rear. At the same time, you've got to get this in. Well, thought it was too easy. Get the spring in. Don't forget your spring. Now, before I put the uh, the end cap back on, the bloody springs fell out. What you can do, you can put some grease on the spring, and that'll help hold it in place so it don't drop out like it's just done. Oh my god. Fiddly bits. What I'm going to do, to make it a bit easier, is to start screwing this one down, but not all the way, otherwise you put too much stress on the block. <clears throat> it's slightly raised at the back, I'm going to drop that in. Now this is where the fun starts. <clears throat> Just remember that bolt is in the rear position. You've got to push that forward, locate it in, just get it started if you can.
believe that's in. So you can tie the front one down again. Go back to the rear. So the rear is tightened up. The front is tightened up. Shift the bolt forward and it's ready to go again. So what we'll do now, we'll put the silence back on it, we're going to craniograph it and see what it's doing. Okay then, I'm going to put the software back on. Alright, in fact, what I'm going to do a profile And go to foot pounds again. Power two, and that's the one. All right, connected. High point four is no different. Nine, no. Right, what I'm going to do, take it apart again. I won't bore you through that procedure. I'll adjust again and we'll come back to it. Hmm. No different. Consistently no different though. Right. So got a spread of uh, 0 0.5 according to that and standard deviation of 0 0.1. Average of 9.4, high of 9.5, so it's shooting okay, but it's just not up there where it should be. Uh, adjusting the armor spring is not going to make any difference now, I don't think. Uh, so maybe the armor spring has lost some of its power, or maybe, maybe the regulator needs adjusting. Can adjust the regulator. But uh, what I'll do, might as well get rid of the rest of these shots and we'll see what kind of uh, performance it's getting. 9.5 again, 9 9.5, 9 9.4, 3, 9.3. 3. 1 1.4 1.3 1.1 1.3 1.3 1.3 1.3 1.3 1.3 Right, so 638 feet per second, I'll 
to go back to the settings again and we'll see what that is in feet per second. So, let's have an average of 641, a high of 645, a low of 629, can't remember that one, spread of 16, standard deviation of 4.2, shot count 23. Uh, so yeah, it's not, it's not where it was, I mean it, I had got it to, to uh, 11.5 so I can't understand what's gone off here. I'm sure the uh, the breach seal is still in there. I'll have to check that one out, but uh, that's all I can do so far. Uh, I'll report back later when I've uh, done a bit more tuning on it. Hello folks, this is uh, the morning after the night before. Uh, I woke up this morning and I realised I've got some uh, spare springs from uh, Robert uh, T.R. Rob. So uh, I'm going to put the spring in and uh, we'll see what difference it makes. You can also use washers like that as long as it's big enough to go over the, uh, the locking nut and inside the actual hammer. But that's another way of doing it if you've not got a spring. Okay then, other option is the TR Rob springs. I'll try a different spring in it. If you look at the two in the middle, <coughs> they're standard. The one on the far right is uh, a lesser size spring, and then obviously the one on the left is uh, really big. Probably won't fit in, might have to cut some coils off, but I'll try that one anyway. Okay, then, let's get on with the test. I'm using the uh, Day State uh, Heavies field targets at uh, 10.25 grains. I think that's gone down or not. Yeah, It's uh, still no different, I can't understand it, it's got to be the regulator, so it's keeping it at the same sort of uh, power, so it's got to be the reg, so uh, I'll adjust that. Okay then, so uh, I've actually mounted the uh, rifle and the soft jaw device, makes it a bit easier at the back end here so I can hold it. Tension. Although, when you're coming to taking it apart, make sure the hammer's forward rather than back. It's only when you're actually uh, pulling it back together, it needs to be in the cock position. But what I'm going to do next will be to take out the, uh, the regulator. Still got air in it. I'm taking the the hammer out, and I'm gonna get a dowel. Hit the uh, dowel at the uh, the valve stem and release the air from it. We can pull the probe back. So get the hammer out.
Right, this is the, the actual rod that gets the reg out, but. Still quite a bit of air in it, oh, that's a problem. all gone okay turn it around what we need to do next take the uh, front valve off again some grub screws either side of the uh, barrel band and they locks locking into the actual valve this off the other way. So that's our front part off. And what I'm hoping I can do now put that back on. Just use it to loosen off the back part of the oh. Loosen that off. Quite a long thread. <laughs> okay, so on this one, this is the extractor for the regulator. Screw that onto the rag. <laughs> oh, come on, old Ross, make, make the longest things to get a hold of it. Looks like I might have to take the bloody valve off at this end. those two nuts are holding the valve in and then there's, there's another nut on the bridge 
Then I'm gonna to have to do that to get it out. Shove it through or pull it out with the valve on it. That's probably what I'm gonna to have to do. Alright. the uh, top part off. Now another way you can uh, increase it is open up the uh, transfer port but I don't really want to do that yet. Uh, <clears throat> Bloody full strip down, I never expected after to do this. through to the other end. Adjustment on the reg regulator is that bit there. Little uh, screw. <sighs> Got a gunge on it. At least I can clean it up now anyway. Just left to power it up so. Clean that up, pull it back in, and we'll take it from there. Okay, so I've cleaned it all up, put it back in that. It's all about lining things up now. I'll try not to uh, bugger up the O rings on the way back in. Here we go. Okay then, I've done the final tuning. I'm hoping that this uh, this is going to be the last one now. Uh, it will need more fine tuning, but as long as I've got it where it is, I can do some shooting on the range. I will get a long uh, reach screwdriver so I can adjust the regulator, bring it down a bit, and then tune the hammer spring up again. But I have. Uh, Modified the hammer, so uh, we'll see how it goes anyway. 
it's doing what it should be doing now. Eleven five. Eleven six. Eleven five. Eleven five. Eleven five. Eleven five. Yeah, looks like I've got it set up right. Based on that, it's 18 shots and average is 11.5, which is spot on. Uh, we've got a high of 11.7 and a low of 11.2. So that's a spread of 0.5 foot pounds. Standard deviation of 0.1 and shot count of 18. So uh, yeah. Uh, I'll fire another 18 shots for it and see if it deviates much from what it is now. I'm pretty pleased that that's back to where it should be. Now to the hammer, I, I did modify that. I, I weighted the hammer and I cut the, the actual hammer spring down so it's got a short hammer spring and uh, more weight to the hammer None of the pallets are weight, uh, weighed, so it could be a slight difference, but there's not much in it anyway. Level 5. Level 5. Level 5. Level 3. Level 3. Level 2. Right, I'll call it at that. So uh, that is the, uh, the tune-up of the uh, breakup concept. After for some reason it was shooting at nine foot pounds. I don't know what happened there, but I've got it to where it should be again. So uh, it's took me it's took me about five hours to get where I am now. So uh, a lot of messing around. It's not easy tuning a rifle when you've got a regulator in it. Alright, so uh, the next uh, short video I'll be testing it on the range. <laughs> 